welcome back to La Deutsche Vita, life in Germany, made in Germany. If you're a new subscriber, welcome, settle in, join me as I tell you, as I discover my journey in um, Germany, living in Germany and how everything has been so far. Just join me, okay? So subscribe, like, comment and share. And this week I asked you guys to, actually it was last week, I asked you guys to send me questions on Twitter about life in Germany, my life, my experience, and also general questions that you may have about living in Germany. And I had already recorded the video, but I had to redo because I realized that I missed some questions and I didn't want to stop somewhere and blah, blah, so. So guys, let's just get right into it because we have a number of questions. The first question is, is German easy to learn? You're asking me. The language devil if German is easy to learn <laughs> I would I would say yes yes once you come with the readiness to learn then some things would would fall naturally to you or would come to you naturally but I think um, people would say it's hard because the grammar structure is so complex you know in, in english we don't have these cases you know genitive dative accusative that as a nominative dative accusative eh? nominative genitive dative accusative it's not in, in in english so i think that's one part that really um throws people off or poses as a difficulty for um, learners especially coming from the English language yes it is complex but once you get the hang of it you would find it more natural as time goes but of course the words are, are a bit longer than the English words because German is very precise so the word already describes what it's supposed to um, it describes what it's, 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 it's titling let me just put it that way so like I remember um, I once did Unfall für Ursache. So Unfall für Ursache means Unfall slash accident für Ursache, the person who caused it. So the person who caused the accident. But in English they would have like a foreign term for it, either borrowed from the Latin or from the Greek. But German um, describes everything by itself. Okay. So um, I would say what would make it easy would be just for you to dive into it. But when it comes to the complexity of it, um, it took me years to get have my ooh, ah, uh -huh, uh -huh, okay this, this is why it's like this I didn't really understand everything immediately but I think once you start it would come easy and I don't think any language is easy to learn so compared to that and one thing I love about German is that it is regular what you see is what you get even the irregular verbs follow a regular pattern within their group so um, yeah it's doable once you come with the readiness it's going to be easy okay next question is can I live comfortably in Germany without speaking German no no because compared to okay now it's quite easy because compared to when I first came to Germany um, nobody was speaking English even the, the the shops didn't have now they have sale and all that it, that those days they'll call it Skriduzierung um, Ausverkauf, Wemmungsverkauf, blah blah blah. But now they'll tell you clearance sale, sale, you know. So even if you don't understand German, you know, sale means you're going to save money, so you go in. But when I first came, ne, ne, reduziert, stand dran. Wemmungsverkauf, um, Ausverkauf, um, billigere Preise. You know, these were the terms that were being used, but now you see sale. So now, yes. There's a lot of Danglish going on, mixture of German and English, but I won't say that you would live comfortably because you also get to a point where the person doesn't speak English or is not comfortable speaking English and you are in Germany. So the first language that is going to be used here is German. So I don't think you would get away with not learning German at all. It won't work. Is it true that if you can speak Ewe and write Ewe well, learning German won't be too difficult for you? Bibito, Mileji fast, Mileji easy, hello. Um, well, I speak Ewe, I am an Ewe girl. Um, 
but I speak and write fancy. I don't, I can't read away. I can't um, write away. Of course, I tried to read it, but Charlie, I'm going to do a night with them. I'm going to read the crime and say sometimes, but not all the time. Because I didn't, I didn't learn the basics to read it. So, what do I really have to say now? I can't read it. But, so for that, I can't really answer. But I doubt, because as I said earlier, this complexity of the cases for the nouns and when to use that with the accusative, I don't think we have it in every. And, okay, what might be easier for you is that thinking that um, certain vowels and certain consonants sound different when they when they are connected with this or that maybe that's why it would be easier for you to uh, adopt that thinking that oh the ei in german is i uh, the eu is oi um we have sharp s that is it looks like a b but it's actually a double s so it's more like a sharp s um maybe that but apart from that mm -mm, i don't think it should be easier well, my own, I'm a king. I, I can't I can't read it, so I won't be the first person to answer that. <laughs> Maybe you've, you've heard me speaking and when you think I can read it, thing. Eh? <laughs> it's a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> um, next question. What are the employment prospects for people with IT background in Germany? Um, employment prospects. Well, I asked a friend and he was like, basically, what you need to know is know the language that the company which i'm about or who is going to hire you um speaks so the coding language and if you 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 have experience in the coding language that is more um that is more accepted in germany broadly or maybe there is going to be a company that even specifies in that language that other people don't use in germany so it all depends on the company that you apply to and if you're interested in applying um, as a qualified professional I made a video on that, so I'm going to link it somewhere here or here. So, yeah, check it out. Next question: Is rent expensive compared to other European countries? Um, so it, within Germany, we we have this kind of cut. Um, down south, rent is more expensive than up north. So, um, rent in Berlin is definitely cheaper than rent in Stuttgart or in Munich or in Frankfurt. Cologne is in between, Cologne is in between, but um, let's say the proportion of your income that you use for rent, when it, when you observe in, in that perspective, then um, I would say that the, the rent in Germany is cheaper because it takes a smaller amount of your rent, um, of your income than in other European countries. So you hear that, or oh, somebody will say, oh, in Italy I was paying just 600 for maybe three rooms or four rooms for like a warm apartment with heating everything and in Germany it's not like that but you have to bear in mind that in Italy the person is not earning as much as, as as somebody in Germany would be earning you know so that's how I would relate it so I think overall um, when you you observe from the income perspective and the ratio German um, apartments are cheaper Next question. So what are some of the challenges you face as a Ghanaian trying to hustle to make it up there? Hustle, hustle, hustle real hard. Hustle, hustle, hustle real hard. Um, as a Ghanaian trying to hustle. Like I said, I hustle with no idea. I don't really know it. Because whenever I think of hustle, I'm thinking of, you know, the wrong, the you know, yo, yo, yo. So, <laughs> but um, seriously though, as a child, I came in as a child, I was 12, that was 15, hey, almost 16 years ago, and yeah, 15 and a half years ago, and I would say that my hustling was more internal because as a child, I didn't have to think of my legal state. I didn't have to think of food or finances. Um, it was more of internal, like finding my identity, um, struggling with racism, struggling with self-confidence, struggling with finding my voice as a black, young black woman. And also trying to stay loyal to my culture. What can I accept? What can't I accept? So I had more of an internal struggle. 
you know and where do i belong to where do i call home and all of that i think that was much more of my struggle but now growing up of course you, you're going to think of um where do i stay what, what is safe for me um which um community or which city is is more welcoming where can i make the most bucks um and and i think growing up once once you've grown up here your struggles are a bit different than somebody who comes in as an already made adult you know yeah the next question was actually actually it's more, more of a comment so so take me on a tour about the country if you want to see um tour vlogs as in vlogs of german cities let me know we'll do that definitely because i love to travel around germany so and i think i have some um Ooh, a question just came in what about germany would you bring to ghana and what about ghana would you send to germany what about germany would you bring to ghana and what about ghana would you bring to germany hey <laughs> what about germany would i bring to ghana bring to ghana what i'll bring to ghana is number one the secularization is that how you say it like separation of state and church because i see that it makes things easier it makes things more objective and i don't have to do business with you because you're my church brother i have to do business with you because you are qualified okay because you are going to give me what i need and what i want that is one thing Yeah, separation of church and state and what would I bring to Ghana from Germany definitely good roads because hey sometimes I'm used to driving fast when I say I'm a dog all right but I think what stops me in Ghana is the roads are not that good so I have to slow down and do and it's not everywhere that roads are not good actually the roads are fairly good like in the main cities and you know, Takradi Market Circle, the whole Takradi place, the roads are smooth and everything, hardly any potholes. But once I want to go home, in, in, and um, where people usually don't visit, like where there are no main roads, then it becomes a struggle. So I really wish that I could just take the roads like this. And so I really wish that I could take the roads here and plant them here. Yes. I think these are the two things I would take from Germany to Ghana. And one thing I would, I would take from Germany to Ghana is... An alcohol-free beer! <laughs> an alcohol-free beer. At least I can take alcohol-free beer. Give me a radler. Let me take a radler to Ghana, okay? Yes. Ooh, what else would I take to Ghana from Germany? Um, 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 um. Yeah, so I definitely want to take mild hash and I definitely want to take um, German, Germany has a variety of bread, okay? Vollkorn, Melkorn, Roggen, Sonnenblumenkern. In fact, there's even turmeric bread. <laughs> there's all kinds of bread, sweet and savory, everything. For that, let's take it to Ghana. And mm, all the different types of ham. Mm. Yeah, let's take the food with us. Let's take the food. Yes, those are the things I'll take from Germany to Ghana. What would I take from Ghana to Germany? Number one, the weather. The weather. The weather. The weather. I'll take. I'll take the beach. Of course, there are beaches around. There are beaches around, but that's um um a certain about boom 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 no. I have said that, but my hand it's more like lakes and rivers. But as I said, I'm a Tadarian, okay? Somebody's going to say Tadarian again because it's so old. I've said it. <laughs> I am from the West. West Side Legacy. Tim, move! Um, <laughs> I'll take the sea. I'll take. Oh, I'll take the coconuts. I'll take. Um, hey, I'll take the music. I'll take the music with me. And it's one thing I missed so much when I first came. Shout out to my dad because he used to have all these CDs um, from 
Papa Yanks and all that so I would listen to it alone with the headset and I would feel so at peace because I was missing Ghana so much and people People always ask me, why are you so young and you've been listening to other things? Because that's what my dad had. <laughs> and that's what I was connecting to. And when I came back to 2004, internet wasn't as active as it is today. So um, I couldn't get access to everything. And not everybody was putting their stuff on YouTube anyway. So I would take the music. I would take the... What else would I take? The humor. Okay, then humor is lit. <laughs> It's lit, I'll take it. I'll take it with me. Um, I'll take the the hard working um aspect of the of my people, definitely. And discipline. I'll take that. I'll take that with me. So what else would I take? I'll definitely want to take parts of our culture um with me to Germany. Yeah, what, what would I bring? Germany from Ghana. And yes, and the food I make. Share, there is a certain type of satisfaction that eating food that you can only get in your home country gives you. Hmm. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. I'll take the food. Next question How did moving to Germany influence your career path? I'm moving to Germany, I think. I would see it as what moving to Germany added to my career. Um, that's how I would, I, would, I would even rephrase it. I think moving to Germany gave me the, <clears throat> the ability to actively learn languages because I had ancient Latin in, in high school, I had ancient Greek. Okay, I didn't do much of ancient, I just went there to learn how to spell my name Phoebe in Greek because I knew it was a Greek name and i wanted to know the meaning and my teacher her shelf god bless you he was also my ancient latin teacher as well and he really took the time to <laughs> pamper me with all that information so yes um okay i did ancient greek kakra it's enough i did french don't ask me to speak french i can only write it when you dictate it to me and i can understand most of it when i i read it but me phoebe read French to you for you to hear my line. I did Spanish. I was really good in Spanish, but I didn't have anybody to practice with. And suddenly when people speak Spanish, I feel like they're speaking too fast. So, <laughs> but I did Spanish and I did, of course, there was the English language as well. But I chose, um, and yeah, moving to Germany gave me the, the chance to learn the translation in a more professional way and um, I'm in the legal field but I also do legal translations on the side and it's definitely broadened my options for me. Um, I think back in Ghana I would have still had the same chance because I speak airway, I speak fancy, I understand G, I speak G, I, I was ready to learn Ga but I wouldn't have made it a, a, a career because it's being multilingual in Ghana is nothing big but now I have German English, German, Fancy, German, Ere, German, Chi, that um, I'm exploiting now, like I'm, I'm working with and it's, it's been fun. I think I almost enjoy it more than um, tax law, just a little bit more. Okay, so what was your first culture shock? Hey! <laughs> My first culture shock was this place was quiet! Yet, how about summer? I was thinking it was something else because you know, in Ghana, even like okay, in the marketplace, yeah, every store was playing their own music, right? They would listen to their own radio stations and everything, so there's always this noise, and I had gotten so used to it. And even where we lived, it was a residential area, but there was one neighbor, he was up the hill at um. Six, even before six grand, we wait. No, no, passenger be check. How much I'm going? Here we are. We are come. My one now, what can we do? No, we are the my one son. Oh, today he would play all these devotional songs, 
and then so he will go to work and by the time he comes back and you know he's playing high life so even if my mom wasn't playing music at home all i had to do was sit out in the yard and i'll be enjoying music or the hotels around the hotels around um where we we're living before in Bikachu, i think it was called lagoon side hotel or lagoon Road, whatever they were always having um live band performances for the parties for people's events <laughs> so when I came here, nobody was disturbing with music. I was like, "You should hire boring papa." Yeah, I, I thought it was boring because it was so quiet. The second shock I had was when I started school. Then there was no assembly, no parade, no we are marching to our classes. I missed it because I was a tall girl. Even though I was the youngest in class back in Ghana, I was tall, so shortest in front, and I could tease the short people, and I could go to the back, and you know. It was it was fun but then um one thing that was very evident for me was the objectivity of things so in germany they didn't really put this they, 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 they still don't this god factor is not so it, it's basically almost non-existent that like the way we would say um if god permits in ghana Okay, down south we greet saying Cruz God, you know, Cruz God. It doesn't mean greet God, but I think it, it, that's the only religious thing that I, I saw here, like it was say Cruz God. That was the only thing that I, I experienced. Up to date, the only time that I've had anything with the God factor would be probably when you're being sworn in. So yeah, then they'll even ask you, do you want with the religious um, notion or not? Um, and you can say no, I don't. I don't need it. They will just let you swear and say um, I promise to or I swear to. But um, they, if you want, you can say um, so help me God. But that's the only time as well. So mit religiöser Beteuerung oder nicht, so war mir Gott helfe. That's it. So that was a big shock. You know, in Ghana, in school, cry. We had worship on. Monday on Wednesdays and Fridays and that jamming session whoo with the drums and everything I loved going to school on weekends I mean on Fridays because you know that day from 7 to at least 9 a.m. it was dancing time it was singing time but here the only time we would be singing was in music class and then that one cry wasn't jammings you know it wasn't jammings but it was okay here yeah, was cool too we had we were singing along to Beatles songs and um some famous songs like eye of the tiger and blah blah excuse me like eye of the tiger and blah blah but they were they were also cool like at that time i'd already gotten used to the system so i enjoyed those as well so yeah that separation of church and state is very 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 clear here like um yeah that's one culture shock i had what's your favorite thing about the lockdown period flexibility flexibility i loved waking up um when i had to start work because then i have don't know how to wake up at 5 30 or 6 to catch the train to go to work i could just um basically put keep the laptop right beside my bed and once it's seven you open you log in you start working and you could plan your day much more freely if you have an appointment you go catch it and even in the beginning there weren't any appointments all of them were cancelled right or put on hold or postponed but as time went on and the lockdown um regulations were being um uh, isn't um it was then okay for me like i was going out and coming back and even on a work day i was just more flexible and of course i loved bonding with family and friends we could visit family um and spend time with them and be working at the same time too we'd have our meals together because we were all home and it was just much more bonding and i enjoyed that definitely and yes of course I'm, i love the cooking aspect because i was cooking a lot during lockdown i was because uh, as I said, we're all home, so trying out new recipes, pampering the family with good food and pampering yourself with good food. And also, um, because you were home all the time, you appreciated every time that you could spend out in nature. So we're taking a lot of walks as well. And 
um, trying to work out and just create a balance and doing that with family and with my partner that was definitely a good thing it was fun now if you had the chance to go back to the year you came to Germany that would be 2004 what would you would you still pick Germany or another country they didn't ask me they didn't ask me where I wanted to go they just took me on the flight but if they had asked me, the truth is, I wouldn't even know enough to say something. Um, whether I wanted to go to a different country. I would have probably said I want to stay in Ghana because at that time, I I was like, oh, I don't, uh, I didn't want to leave Ghana because my dad had already made me know that there wasn't going to be any, sorry, the camera keeps stopping at a certain time. So my dad had already made me know that it wasn't going to be any pounded fufu and I love fufu so I was very very worried. <laughs> I didn't have the wish that we had gone to an English speaking country but then um, if he had asked me then I would have said I don't want to travel to anywhere. Yeah. Do you see yourself settling in Germany for the rest of your life? Hey, the rest of my life don't work. But, um, latest by the time i retired that is if i would ever retire um i would want a warmer climate so it could be ghana it could be anywhere where the sun shines every day but staying here throughout for all those winters no i can't do you ever think of ever moving back to settle in ghana um yes i've, I've thought of it especially at the beginning Imagining having sweet hair every morning, coconut, coconut water, um, mango. Imagine cocoa would cost it every morning. It's possible. It is very possible. It. I will. I might. In fact, I might. I might. Next question. What made you study law? <laughs> <laughs> what made me study law? To be very honest, um, I was going to um, I was going to do business and just get a job. And, but I was going through stuff. I was going through something that I thought was some mean form of injustice. So I said, "Hmm, I need, I need more information. I, I need to educate myself." And my mom was like, well, I'm like, 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 I'm too. So, basically, it was a personal situation, it was anger, it was pain that made me um, study law. And now it's become a passion that I can't do without. Definitely not. So, what is your favorite German food and can you cook it? What's a question? What's, what's a question? My favorite German food would be Maltaschen. I I started cooking it for myself because it's easy, okay? Fry your onions, fry your Maltaschen, whisk your egg. If you like, you add some milk, pour it over it, let it cook a bit. If you want, you can cover it with some cheese. So that I'll be a yeah. Next question. A personal question will be, how do you find the dating scene in Germany? that if you had the courage to try. So, um, I've had the courage to try to cross over into the German dating pool and I've been loving every bit of it. I'd say that dating, it depends on the person you meet and of course on yourself. Before you even cross out of your cultural circle to a different culture, you should know what you want, your own principles, what works for you, what does not work for you and all of that, okay? Don't take all of these for granted. It is not going to work. You and your partner both have to come with the curiosity and the willingness to learn about each other's culture and make compromises. And also, do you discover things together. You need to have sex. So guys, I hope I've answered all the questions. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. It's a bit longer than usual, but thanks for sticking with me. Have a blessed time ahead. Comment, let me know what you think. If you have other questions, we'll do another one. We'll do a part two, part three, part four. Anything you want, we'll do it, okay? Subscribe and share, like, okay? Thanks so much. See you next time. Cheers.